Hello everybody and welcome back to another Sofimil tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to talk about gravity and we're going to talk about jumping. First of all a little bit of a disclaimer. I'm currently on vacation so I do not have my good mic with me and I do not have my camera with me. So the audio quality is going to be a little bit less than normal because I'm using a headset and there's not going to be a face cam. I'm sorry about that but I haven't uploaded anything in a while and I'm really sorry about that so I really wanted to make a video for you guys. So first of all why do we need jumping? Well jumping is actually a really big mechanic in a lot of different different games like Mario. So how do we do that? Well there are three things that we're going to need to do. The first thing that we're going to need to do is we need to change the on collision class. We're going to need to add some sort of direction to it so we can use that direction to basically specify whether or not we're colliding with the ground so we can jump again. Because if we're colliding with the roof for instance then we do not want to make it so we can jump again. The second thing that we're going to need to do is we need to add the jumping mechanics to the player. We want to make it so the player can jump. So add all of the jump lot in the player. The third thing that we're going to need to do is we need to add some sort of on collision function to the player in which we're gonna basically reset can jump whenever we are colliding with the ground. So let's start with the direction inside of collider.h. So the thing that we're gonna need to add to check collision is an sf vector 2f called direction. And we need to add that to the collider.cpp file too. Oh and it needs to be a reference because we want to be able to set it and send it back. So a reference, and then in here, you want to set it. If intersect at x is bigger than intersect at y, and delta x is bigger than zero, that means that we're colliding with something on the right of us. So you want to set direction.x to one. And we want to set direction.y equal to zero, because we're not colliding with anything on the y-axis. And then we basically want to do the same thing if delta x is less than zero. But instead of setting x to one, we want to set x to negative one, because that means that we're colliding with something on the left. And then we want to do the same thing with delta y. If delta dot y is bigger than 0 at 0f, then we're colliding with something underneath us because the y-axis is in SFML is flipped. So you want to set this to 1. Uh, the reason that we're setting it to 1 and not negative 1 like you would expect it to because we're colliding with something underneath us is because you want to do it in SFML's coordinate space. But because it's bigger than 0 on the y-axis, that means that it's underneath us. So that's something to keep in mind. And then we want to do the same thing with negative 1 whenever delta y is less than 0. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is we need to add a few variables to player.h. The first thing that we're going to need is we need to move this movement variable to player.h because we want to be able to keep our velocity over the frames. Right now movement is frame specific because at the end of the frame we'll just be deleted because it's inside of the function itself. But when we're able to jump then we want to basically keep our jumping. We do not want to only jump for one frame. That would look really weird. So we're going to store a new SF vector 2f called uh, velocity inside of player.h. Then we also need a boolean called can jump, and we need a float called jump height. Okay, can jump basically specifies whether or not we're able to jump, so whether or not we're colliding with the ground so we can basically yeah jump off of it. And jump height is going to be the height that we can jump at. We want to be able to set this for the player without having to go inside of player.cpp or player.h every time, so we're going to add it to the constructor as well. So we need another float called jump height, and we need that in player.cpp too. So a float called jump height, and then in here we want to set this jump height equal to jump height. Okay, and that's it. So let's now create the logic. The first thing that we need to do is remove W and S. We don't want to be able to move up and down anymore. And remove this movement variable. What we want to do is we want to change movement with velocity. So everywhere that we use movement right now, we want to change that to velocity. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make it so our movement is not frame rate specific anymore. Because we're, we're setting movement.x equal to basically speed multiplied by delta time. But because we're using a private variable right now that's inside of the class itself, instead of the function, we want to make it so it's not frame specific anymore. So one way to do that is by multiplying velocity by delta time at the end whenever we're calling body.move instead of every time that we're adding something to it. So this will basically make it so it's not frame specific anymore. It will work on all different frames. It doesn't matter if it's the first frame or the 60th frame, it would still work because you're not using variables that are already modified. You're only modifying at the end. One thing that you might notice is that because velocity is saved, we're basically holding the A button, then we would call 
velocity.x minus equals speed every frame. And that will make it so we constantly accelerate in the left direction. And we do not want that. There are two ways to fix this. The first way is simply setting velocity.x equal to 0.0f at the beginning of each frame. And this will basically mean that whenever you release a button, you will instantly stop moving. What you can also do is call velocity.x times equals 0.5f for instance. And this will mean that the speed that you're moving at will be halved every frame. So that will mean that instead of instantly stopping whenever you release A, you will slowly stop moving. And by making this number bigger, so let's say 0.8f, it will take a longer time for you to stop. And by making it smaller, 0.2f for instance, it will take a shorter time for you to stop. But I will just do velocity.x is equal to 0.0f, but play around with it as much as you want. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need is the jumping mechanic. So how do we do that? Well, we first need a key binding for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind jumping to the spacebar key. You could also bind it to W or whatever you want, but I'm doing spacebar right now. So if SF keyboard is key pressed, SF keyboard spacebar or space, then we want to be able to jump. But we only want to be able to jump if can jump is true. So what we do is we add the double and and then can jump. So this will basically mean only when these two things are true, we're able to jump. So only if space is pressed and can jump is equal to true, then we're able to jump. And the first thing that we should do inside of this function is set can jump to false. So make it so we cannot jump anymore because we just started jumping. And then in here, we want to add an impulse to velocity.y to make it so we can actually jump. So how do we calculate this impulse? Well, it's actually quite easy. There's a good formula for that. What the formula is, is the square root of 2.0f times gravity multiplied by the jump height. So let's use this formula. So velocity dot y is equal to the square root f, f because we're using floats, 2.0f multiplied by gravity, so 9.81f multiplied by jump height. The more experienced ones under you might have already noticed that 9.81f is meters. And we're using uh, SFML units right now, which are basically equal to one pixel. So it's a, it's a little bit different here. So basically, this will specify that each pixel is equal to uh, a meter in real life numbers. And that's not accurate at all. We might want to specify like 100 SFML units are equal to a meter. So we're going to have to modify that here. So let's make it so, yeah, 100 SFML units are equal to a meter. So we basically have to move the comma 2 to the right. So it's going to be uh, 981.0f. So this will basically mean that 100 SFML units are equal to a meter, which is a great thing because our player has the size of a meter by one and a half meters. And that's a, a pretty all right size, if you ask me. And the next thing that might be off about this, that some of the more experienced ones under you might have already noticed, is that SFML's coordinate system is flipped on the y-axis. So this velocity of y is equal to the square root 2 times 981 multiplied by jump height will basically make it so we jump down instead of up. So how can we change this and basically fix that? Well, we simply add a minus in front of square root. And this is basically the entire jumping mechanic. So the next thing that we need to add is gravity. Because yeah, we might be able to jump, but we also need it so we can fall down again. So that's also actually not that hard. Adding gravity is basically just adding gravity <laughs> to velocity to y. So velocity to y plus equals gravity, so uh, 981.0f, multiplied by delta time. And that's basically all of the jumping mechanics. The next thing that we need to do is make it so whenever we hit the ground, we can jump again, because we're not resetting can jump anywhere right now. In order to do that, we need to add another function to our player.h. And that function is going to be a void, and it's going to be called on collision. And what we need to pass in here is an sf vector 2f called direction. You might remember this direction, because this is going to be the same direction as we're passing into check collision. So we're basically going to use the direction that we're getting from that function in this function. So this class is going to contain a whole lot of if statements. The first one is going to be if direction.x is less than 0.0f. If this is the case, then we simply just want to set velocity.x equal to 0.0f. So we basically want to make it so we stop moving on the x-axis because we're hitting a wall on the left side of us. So we can add a note to this collision on the left. Then we want to add an else if direction.x is bigger than 0 to 0f. The reason that I'm using an else if and not just an else is because direction.x can also be equal to 0 and that means that we're not colliding with anything at all on the x-direction. So in that case, velocity.x is also going to just be set to 0 to 0f. And we add a node called collision on the right. 
Okay, now we need two more if statements. If direction dot y is bigger than 0 0.0f, .0 that means that we're colliding with something on the bottom of us, I think. Collision, collision on the bottom. Then we want to set velocity dot y equal to 0 0.0f. .0 and we also want to set can jump to true. Because whenever we're colliding with something on the bottom of us, we basically just want to reset can jump. We, we're colliding with the ground underneath us, so we need to be able to jump again. And then an else if direction dot y is bigger than 0 0.0f. .0 Velocity dot y is equal to zero dot zero f and let's set our note collision on the top. Okay, and it's basically all the way to modifying player dot h. So the next thing that we're gonna need to do is add a jump height to the player. Let's put it at two hundred for now. So two hundred SFMI units. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is add a ground to our map. I already created a platform for that. I was testing around to see what would be a good ground, and uh, this was the result. But one thing that we're going to do, because we have so many platforms right now, is create a vector for that. So an SCD vector. But before we can use vectors correctly, we need to include vector on the top. Okay, and this is going to be a vector of platforms called platforms. So we're basically going to add all of these platforms in here. So platforms.pushback, a new platform uh, with no pointer, SF vector 2F. Uh, what's the first one? 400 by 200. So 400 OF by 200 OF. And then another SF vector 2F with 500 OF and 200 OF. Okay, let's copy this two times and modify the values so they're correct again. So 200 and 500 there, and then a thousand here. Okay, and that's it. The reason that I changed it to a vector instead of just having the individual platforms is because we might want to have a hundred different platforms. So we're basically going to have a hundred redundant lines of code for every collision check, for every draw call, and whatever else we need to do with the platforms. So one thing that is going to be different though is um, the push variable is going to be the same for all of the different platforms. So if you want to have crates that you can move around, it might be better to have either a separate vector for that or you might want to add the push vector to the platform itself instead of having it a global thing. So basically have it in its set. Okay, so let's now do the collision. The first thing that we're going to need is in vector 2f called direction. This direction vector is going to be the direction that we're passing into the on collision function and also what we're going to pass into the player on collision function. So now we need a for loop for platform and platform inside of platforms. And then we'll call platform, oh sorry, if platform dot get collider check collision with player dot get collider and then one dot of if this is the case then we want to call player dot on collision with the direction oh i completely forgot about direction so between player to get collider and one dot of we need to pass in direction this for loop by the way platform and platform column platforms is exactly the same as uh, for int i is equal to zero i is less than platforms dot size i plus plus and then creating a platform reference, so platform reference called platform, and setting it equal to platforms i. So basically what this for loop does is exactly this. So we'll loop through all of the platforms and then we'll set a platform reference called platform or whatever you specify the name as to the ith platform. Okay, so now we can remove this and basically copy this for loop and put it down in a draw section and then uh, add platform.draw there and in theory it should work so let's test it out what you will see is that we can still move around but not up and down and we can jump but one thing that you will notice is that as soon as you hit the floor you will not be able to jump off of it again but that's an easy fix apparently uh, these two are flipped oh I can see why <laughs> I apparently did a bigger than here too, and this should be a smaller than. So if direction at y is less than 0 0.0f, then can jump should be true. Else if direction at y is bigger than 0 0.0f, uh, you should not set can jump to true again. So now it should work. And whenever we're colliding with the wall, we like cannot jump again. That's because of this on collision function. 
But one thing that you also notice, and this is why I delayed making this episode for so long, is because I wanted to fix this problem, is that whenever you drag the window around, and you stop dragging it around, your player will fall through the floor. Like, if you do a really quick drag, whenever you're close to the edge, you will see that the player will get pushed out of the side of the platform, and then fall down. The reason for that is because the frame rate can be as large as we want it to be. We can have a delta time that's worth a minute, and then our player will fall down for a minute worth of movement. And this is bad, this should not happen, our frame rate should not be that low. But whenever we're moving the window around, or sometimes it just happens because of some weird reason, our delta time gets so big that we fall in through the floor so far that we either fall through it or we get pushed out of the side. But there's an easy fix for that. If we go into mainnet CVP and we go up to where we're setting delta time, we can manually basically lock the frame rate to basically make it so it has a minimum frame rate. So what we do for that is we type in if delta time is bigger than 1.0f divided by, uh, let's do 20 frames per second, so 20, then delta time will be set to 1.0f divided by 20. This will mean that whenever your frame rate is lower than 20, we'll artificially set the frame rate to 20 frames a second, or the delta time that is equivalent to 20 frames a second. So if you run this game at 10 frames a second, it will actually run still with the delta time of 20 frames a second. So it's a little bit weird and it might look weird on a low-end machine so if it's running less than 20 frames a second, but it's a necessary evil. And you can modify this value and check which works for you. So now if you run a program again and test for that bug again, you will see that it no longer happens. So we can drag the window around, but we will not fall through the floor anymore. So that's basically all I want to talk about in this episode. I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.